Around 100 million years ago, a giant walked the earth that weighed as much as nine African savanna elephants. Considering they're the biggest terrestrial animals alive today, that's pretty huge. However, even Patagotitans titans like the one that now dwarfs the halls of London's Natural History Museum weren't too big to have something to take a bite out of their tail. This is Titanosaur. Life is the biggest dinosaur. So I'm here with Dr. Susie Maven. Uh, hi Susie, hi. what a great backdrop for our first chat. Yeah, I know, it's amazing, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so Susie, could you tell me a bit about what it is you do at the museum? Yeah, I'm one of the museum's two dinosaur researchers. Um, and we study our collection, which is one of the most important and diverse dinosaur collections anywhere in the world. Um, I look after students and I also look after the collection and make it accessible for other researchers. So uh, the first thing I wanted to ask you about was the life cycle of Patagotitan. What did they go through and how long did they live? Well, uh, these animals, uh, of course, they're, they're reptiles, so they laid eggs. Um, and their eggs weren't very big. They were probably a bit smaller than a football. So they maybe laid 40 or 50 eggs in a single clutch and they might have laid multiple clutches per year. And now titanosaurs weren't that bothered um, about looking after their young. They sort of dropped and went. Um, <laughs> so they, yeah, yeah, casual attitude. So they, they uh, would have made their nesting probably kind of mounds on the ground, uh, laid the eggs, maybe covered them, uh, and then off they went. And that was it for parental care. Uh, so the, 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 the babies probably hatched out. They may have lived together in a kind of herd when they were hatchlings. Um, they must have grown incredibly rapidly. So you can imagine something that was hatching out of an egg like that, growing to be the largest terrestrial vertebrate ever to walk the earth must have grown incredibly fast and they we don't really know how long they lived um, it's it's really quite difficult to tell that sort of information and it requires cutting up the bones and you can imagine like quite a lot of people don't like you cutting up their very precious dinosaur bones to examine them um, but uh, we think maybe around 50 years or 60 years or something like that very maximum but of course many of these animals would have died when they were much younger from disease or from predation and things like that and those precious dinosaur bones that you mentioned, where have we found them? Oh, we found dinosaur bones from all over the world. And actually, titanosaurs as a group um, are known from all the continents, including Antarctica. Um, Patagotitan here, however, is from Argentina. Fantastic. And as we can see, it's pretty enormous. How did it compare to the other giants of its time? Well, this is one of the largest dinosaurs that ever lived. Um, it's, a, it's, it's really hard to say how much think dinosaurs weighed or any extinct animal weighed because all we have left is their bones. We don't have any of their insides left. So there are a number of different approaches we can use. We think Patagotitan weighed around 57 tonnes. Um, so just to put that in perspective, a big African male elephant today weighs about six tonnes. So it's huge compared to that. There are a couple of other titanosaurs closely related to Patagotitan that also lived in Argentina. And one of those is called Puertosaurus and one is called Argentinosaurus. And they are known from very, very, very few bones. So they look like they're a similar sort of size to Patagotitan, but because we don't have the whole skeleton, we can't tell. So Patagotitan is the largest one that we have kind of really good remains from. And as I understand it, that whole thing of incomplete skeletons, that's a big problem with the biggest dinosaurs. We tend to only find bits and bobs. So like, we've got this wonderful replica here. Are the casts made from the bones of just one specimen or is it a combination of several? How did you build such a complete model? Yeah, it's actually known from six different individuals. So there's six different individual specimens that went into fitting all the bones together and, and building the cast. And actually none of them have a head. So the head is based on um, closely related dinosaurs. So sometimes we have to fill in bits, but actually we almost never find complete dinosaurs in the fossil record. It's incredibly rare. Mostly we'll just find a bit of a dinosaur, a bit of a leg bone, just a few bones here and there. Pretty epic puzzle then. Um, and we actually had a question about the anatomy because notice that the back feet are extremely different from the front. Could yeah. you tell me a bit about why that is? Yeah, well, so, so titanosaurs are really weird and interesting in that they lost all of the bones in their fingers. So they just walk on your metacarpals, which are the bones in your hand. So they sort of knuckle walked, if you Sounds like, a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so they have, they have no toes that we can see here on the feet. Now on the hind feet, they didn't do that. So they've got much more elephantine like hind feet and they, they may well have had a sort of fleshy pad uh, on the heel um, and they still had big kind of toenails and claws there as well. Amazing and I think I read in the exhibition that one of the specimens was found with several teeth near its tail so things were biting them. Yeah. Was this in life or as scavengers? How did that happen? Well that's really really hard to tell so the only way we can tell whether uh, an animal survived an attack 
uh, by another by a predator is if we see some teeth marks or some indents into the bone and the bone has then healed. Now, if we just find a bunch of teeth around a skeleton, then it could have been that the predators were coming and just scavenging off the skeleton when it was already dead. And we can't really distinguish those two uh, unless we have those kind of heel marks. Um, and we, we don't have that here. So the teeth were probably, the skeleton was probably being scavenged uh, by something like Tyrannotitan, which was uh, this, this big, big predator that lived at the same time. And of course, you know, the amount of meat on one of these, yeah. it, it, it would have probably kept the predators going for a while, I would have thought. One hell of a chicken nugget. <laughs> Um, in Prehistoric Planet, which I believe has sponsored this exhibition, we saw that Dreadnoughtus had a kind of fighting side with those thumb stubs. Would these animals have had any way of fighting, or was it more just about size when it came to protecting them? Yeah, I mean, I think the Titanosaurs in general, you know, what their superpower was, if you like, was their very, very large size. I mean, presumably as soon as they were, you know, maybe five, six, seven years old, they were just too big for any predator, really, to attack them. Um, it, it, they, would have, they, they were just so enormous that nothing... Uh, could have got near them really. So uh, presumably the predators were taking out the babies and the young. So we've given people an up close look at one part of this amazing specimen. What else can people expect from the exhibition? Well, you can see um, some real fossils as well, because of course this is a cast of the real thing. Um, there's some real fossils from Platycotitan on display. So we've got um, the uh, upper leg bone and a whole arm actually, so you can really get to see the size of it. We've got some uh, teeth, um, so you can learn about feeding, you can learn about their reproductive strategies, we've got some eggs, uh, but also you can uh, sort of play some games where you can try and keep your herd of hatchling titanosaurs alive. Um, you can learn a little bit about their biology. So these things breathe in a really interesting way. They're much more like birds than they are like we breathe, like mammals. And also kind of about their heart and how much blood they needed, how much food uh, and those sorts of things. So there's lots of kind of interactive things you can do um, to, to play with and learn about titanosaurs' lifestyles. Wow, so an incredible deep dive. Well, thank you so much for speaking to us today. It was great to hear about it. It's a pleasure. So if you'd like to see a dinosaur that makes the world famous Dippy look kind of small, get yourself down to London Natural History Museum's Titanosaur exhibition now.